Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for today, Monday, September 17th, 2012. Again, the links will be posted in YouTube's video description. So check them out. All right, so um, just to wrap up what we were talking about in the last video, um, we went through the whole embassy uh, issue, the anti-Islam um, fervor that's going on, being spread by the mainstream media and stuff like that purposely. Uh, it's being used as an excuse to deploy Marines in the region. Um, also, it's playing into what I see in the common boards by the mainstream sheeple, um, getting them all worked up. Um, total, like I said, I, I use the word ignorant and or useful idiots because that's what they are. Uh, most Muslims are pretty moderate and they don't want to harm anybody else. And they see this stuff on TV and they have no idea. They think it's over just a film. But then again, you know, it goes both ways. There's people over in those countries right now that are playing into exactly what the West and the powers that be want when they uh, go to protests like that and burn American flags. They don't understand that American citizens don't understand that. They just take it as a personal offense. They also don't understand that just like their country, we don't have any control over our government. It's not our government. That's why we don't have any control over it. And even after there's after polls and surveys show that you know most people were against the war in Iraq, most people were uh, are not for the whole um, occupation of Afghanistan. They've wanted the troops to leave for at least a year or two now. They were staunchly opposed to the invasion of Libya and the overthrowing of Gaddafi, but nevertheless, it still happened. So it just goes to show you that we live all live in a dictatorship. So Syria accusing Turkey of giving Al Qaeda access. Well, we know this is true because I just went through all the articles. Of course, Turkey is the main player for the uh, regime change in Syria. Yeah, we know that Obama and France are supporting the Syrian rebels, uh, which are, have associations with Al Qaeda. Uh, other big countries already know this. It's publicly known. Um, and I didn't get a chance to comment on the Libya about these large shipments of Libyan weapons heading to armed groups and terrorists in Syria coming from Turkey. Well, Libya, well, that's a big smuggling port. And uh, maybe that's why they're increasing the presence there in that, uh, because that's has, that's going to be their, um, their secure location for smuggling weapons into Syria and into um, uh, Iran's border and stuff like that. Because we know that Syria is what is kind of the go-between between, between Iran and uh, and the West, so that's why you're going to see more and more stuff uh, like this one over here about Syrian chemical weapons. That's coming straight from Israel, of course. They keep pushing that, trying to link it with Hezbollah, so they can link it with Iran. So, like I said, expect some kind of false flag attack or something, where Israel strikes a U.S. ship or something. Yeah, you had the CIA chief uh, visiting Turkey. That kind of went under the radar. David Petraeus on a one-day visit to Istanbul, and that was from the 4th. Just two days later, Turkish officers suddenly took command of the Syrian rebel brigades, which are mostly terrorists. So Turkey is actually, they're not just letting them, Al-Qaeda, go into, their, into Syria. They're actually harboring them, and they're leading them. You have all kinds of uh, CIA agents and uh, intelligence agents for different countries. Over 50, says an ex-CIA agent in Turkey. You have the Free Syrian Army's transitional government for Syria based in Turkey. You had the U.S. top general set to meet the Turkish general on, uh, today. The leader of Turkey tells media not to cover Kurdish conflict, and they're trying to they're trying to do what they're what they're doing, and uh, it's going to backfire on them as far as the Kurds go. Like I said before. Um, he says here, Erdogan of Turkey is known to lash out publicly against journalists who coverage, whose coverage he disapproves. He called on media owners and editors to discipline reporters and columnists critical of his policies, especially when it comes to the Kurdish issues. He said the message to all media crosses from reprimanding into directly instructing journalists to stop covering the long-standing conflict between Turkish armed forces and Kurdistan's party. So he likens the uh, dissenting opinion in his country as terrorism. Terrorism propaganda. That's kind of similar to what uh, Russia and Australia and I think in the UK, they're actually hiring people, uh, paying millions of dollars to uh, fix misinformation from the internet. So you see, you like that? Just fixing the facts. This is my website, ggnonline.com, global government news, news for the North American Union. You can check out the poll here. What uh, was the production and coverage of the anti-Islam film? A ploy by the Zionists to incite anger towards the U.S. for not supporting an Israeli attack on Iran. 
much many other reasons but so far 66 percent are saying yes followed by four percent no 19 percent maybe and 10 percent not sure so yeah der spiegel quotes witnesses as saying tanks and helicopters fired shells designed to carry chemical weapons in the desert east of aleppo last month so iranian revolutionary guard officers flown in to observe testing so and uh, iran has basically admitted that they are allowing uh, certain factions of Quds forces in Syria, but it says it does not constitute a military presence. So I'm sure that's what the West is saying about their CIA operatives. And then the three reasons the U.S. and Israel are lying about Iran. All right, Israeli Prime Minister has been granted airtime to dictate U.S. foreign policy to American viewers in the latest indication that interests other than those of the American people drive American destiny. So make no mistake, however, Netanyahu is not an American to represent the Israeli people, but rather the same corporate financier interest of the Wall Street and London uh, complex or alliance that created and sustained him politically. So these three reasons the U.S. and Israel admit in their own policy papers that Iran threatens Western uh, hegemony and not Western security. Also, the U.S. and Israel already struck first. By using the State Department listed foreign terrorist organization Mujahideen, the U.S. and Israel have been waging years of co covert war against the Iranian people. And then next we have what? The third one, Israel's current leaders have Wall Street, London, hegemony, not Israel's self-preservation at heart. The greatest myth in regards to U.S.-Israeli policy towards Iran is that it's driven by concerns for national security and the survival of the Jewish state of Israel. In reality, the overall foreign policy pursued by Israel's government has demonstrably uh, run contrary or contrary to both Israel, Israeli people's survival and their own prosperity. So, in other words, the posture towards Iran is perhaps the most dangerous and unhinged manifestation of this. Yeah, and I've covered before the polls by, um, by people in Israel, Israeli citizens that aren't even for an Israeli strike. Uh, Netanyahu was actually 92, saying Iran is close to having nuclear bombs. And you go on, you can actually look at the useful timeline for the dire Israeli and U.S. predictions of an imminent Iranian nuclear weapon beginning 20 years ago via the Christian Science Monitor. 92, Israeli Member of Parliament Netanyahu uh, predicts that Iran was three to five years from having a nuclear weapon back in 1992. Then again, same year, Foreign Minister Perez predicts They'll have a warhead by 99 to French TV. Just three years later, 95, New York Times quoted U.S. and Israeli officials saying that Iran would have a bomb by 2000. And by 1998, our good old buddy Donald Rumsfeld, who disappeared off the radar, tells Congress that Iran could have an intercontinental ballistic missile that could destroy every American sheeple by the year 2003. But this uh, Mr. Dagan, former Mossad chief, says attack on Iran is the stupidest idea he's ever heard. He's a man who Iranian authorities reportedly claim to have dispatched assassins, computer viruses, and faulty equipment in the bid to delay the country's nuclear program. And you have an ex-envoy to Israel saying U.S. will go to war with Iran in 2013. He believes U.S. likely to go to war with Iran in 2013. Says Israel's insistence that U.S. publicly declare red line for Iran is unreasonably or uh, unreasonable requirement. And then finishing up on Iran, and I'm kind of getting sick of covering this whole thing with Iran. I wish they had something would just happen and they would just shut the hell up about it, you know? Uh, because I honestly don't think that there are any sovereign nations anymore, that Iran's just playing this card that they're supposed to play, you know, as part of this, quote, Illuminati or New World Order that most people refer to it as. Obama, you know, a big show, charade. Obama has abandoned Israel, so this is a new thing. Obama has abandoned Israel, right? And uh, even on Infowars and that, they think, oh, uh, they're going to have a false flag attack because they want to get Romney in there before the elections or, or October surprise, right? So, but I don't buy it. I don't, I don't buy that Obama has abandoned Israel. He just signed a security pact for millions of uh, taxpayers' dollars just recently in the last couple of months. So, an Israeli-U.S. defense security pact. So, and they do it every year. But uh, that's not it because you normally do what? U.S. taxpayers spend more on Israeli defense than Israeli taxpayers, says former IDF official. Since 2009, the amount is more than $11 billion, explaining why money needs to be stolen from U.S. taxpayers and given to the only nuclear state in the Middle East, despite the fact that Israeli leaders work directly against U.S. interests, especially when they try to pressure 
uh, as to launch discretionary wars is getting harder even for hawks to do. So talking about Obama abandoning Israel and um, spending more uh, U.S. taxpayer money on their military than Israeli citizens, we have this from the Times of Israel. U.S. would have to actively support Israel if it attacks Iran. This is from August 13, 2012. So Washington would also provide air defense against Te Tehran and its proxy sources say. So you know they're going to back them up if they strike. Um, and then you have this, Iran, Iran's strike must be bigger than Afghan-Iraqi uh, operations combined, says a report. Only a U.S. operation bigger than the evasion of Iraq and Afghanistan combined can stop Iran from its alleged pursuit of a nuclear bomb. A new military report says such action, however, risks igniting an all-out war in the Middle East, which is what they're preparing for. It's like I said before, if Israel is supposed to overtake the United States as far as the kind of big superpower, um, then the United States is going to step in the background. They're going to stay in the background and act as if they don't want this. And then when the time comes, you can be rest assured that every part or every aspect of, uh, of uh, some kind of defense or, yeah, a defense reaction is going to be coming from the United States, mostly, the bulk of it, by the direction of Israel. I was just talking about this recently about how, um, you know, basically Israelis defense is the United States but the United States does not decide its own fate it's based off Israeli political willpower so they're almost like they're codependent much like another country China White House files trade complaint against China so this is complete bullshit the Obama regime on Monday said it launched a new complaint against China the WTO escalating a trade battle so all a big show I've covered this before about how the West basically built up China's economy from the ground up We've actually had people have their, uh, to retrain, train their replacements in China to take over their jobs. American citizens had to. Paid gov uh, U.S. companies to go overseas and set up equipment that's built by the Chinese for U.S. military equipment has back doors in it. They have all the codes and sending bunk parts to the U.S. military as well. So they know what's going on. This is all the big show stirring it up now between the Middle East and China. Uh, China, Japan heading towards war now, says U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta. China and other Asian countries could end up at war over territorial disputes if governments keep up their, keep up their provocative behavior. Meanwhile, in Beijing, for the respect of the motherland, we must go to war with Japan. Thousands besieged Japan's embassy in Beijing over Tokyo's assertion of control over disputed islands in the East China Sea. And China's not happy, and that's what they said. They're ready to go to war with Japan. Chinese government has not done much to quell the inflamed passions of its citizens. Though Japan has controlled the islands for decades, China saw the purchase as further proof of Tokyo's refusal to negotiate. In response to Japan's purchase, China on Friday sent six surveillance ships into Japan's territorial waters. 1,000 Chinese boats set sail towards the disputed islands. Authorities say the islands have been designated as a maritime patrol area to protect the safety of fishermen, which they do every year. After calling on boycotting Japanese goods, angry Chinese protesters ransack Japanese businesses. Panasonic and Canon shutter China factories amid violent anti-Japan protests, so they're shutting down. But this is all a business, right? Because we know what? China was built up by the West and the powers. Japan has been basically held at gunpoint and been a lapdog for the Zionist Anglos uh, since World War II, since they dropped the bombs on them. But the people in Japan, there's still a lot of people that, that hate Americans and don't want us there the marines and that i'm wondering is this another show between like israel and iran and china and japan or is japan actually trying to break away and assert somewhat of its sovereignty i covered remember this japan to hold first talks with north korea in four years that's right and north korea is actually a little uh, weary of china and they don't want them telling them what to do as far as trade goes japan also visited and opened up to talks with iran and north korea is tight with iran so you got iran iran japan um North Korean uh, little access there. This Japan's ambassador to China has died as Chinese police used tear gas and water cannons on an anti-Japan protest. Exactly a month ago, Army Secretary visits U.S. soldiers in South Korea. 
As the U.S. military is shifting its focus to the Asia-Pacific region, the U.S. wades into China-Japan island dispute with missile defense deal. But like I said, they all have their own military-industrial complex. Taiwan is sending patrol ships for the disputed islands. They're also testing new weapons in China war simulation of an attack by rival China. In a first, Indian tank brigades are going to defend the Chinese border. You have Russia and the U.S. arming India. And as the father of Pakistan's nuclear bomb could be the next country's first president, they test fire their nuclear-capable missile. The U.S. spends at least $350 billion on nukes.